Gang War Luke Cage Number 1, written by Rodney Barnes, art by Ramon F. Box, colors by Andrew Dollhouse, and letters by VC's Travis Lanham. I like Rodney Barnes. I like Philadelphia. I think he's a really good writer. I think that he doesn't have much to work with, as we've already talked about, but I don't know. You get some comic booky fun things. You also get a mention of the uh, Threats and Menace website podcast yeah. type deal that we always laugh about with Jay Jonah, who says at the point, because Luke is having a big press conference about, you know, all the stuff in the Fisk Law and all that, how it, it, things are going to have to change, that the NYPD can't really control or handle these sort of things. And while he's trying to do this, you do have Jay Jonah almost with a conspiracy theory of, oh, you're going to let all hell break loose so that they're forced to repeal the Fisk law. Again, I don't want to keep harping on the idea that we barely saw anything with this law. Even when you get later on where they're like, oh, man, you could call them the Thunderbolts, but you can't do anything. I'm like, somebody, I, I want Luke to just deputize everybody. Like any mess, like, all right, here we go. We're going to Daredevil, Spider-Man, me, all that. But he's yeah. going to. You know, you know what I mean? That that yeah, would be kind of be a cool. funny play. But in the meantime, with the idea of where the timing is or whatnot, it doesn't seem like the city is quite on fire yet and what's going down. But you do end up having Luke frustrated about this whole law and does end up talking to Randy because Randy ends up saying we have this protest going on. We have a bunch of followers out and about and whatnot. Seems like all of them are out and about they got the signs and things like that but in the meantime you know luke wants to stretch his legs a bit and do a little bit of knocking some heads but also going to see his buddy danny so he goes and pretends he's going to the bathroom jumps off of this ledge and goes and runs out of there to go talk to former iron fist mm-hmm. and ran so he goes to talk to him and i do like their come I, I like the back and forth between these two and we already said in the First deal, all this, you have Shang-Chi going on, so maybe they'll be able to fight against each other. He does end up saying, don't have the whole Iron Fist deal, but I still know some Kung Fu. Yeah, it's still a black belt. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of funny. And the idea of Luke saying, well, I'm also bulletproof with all this stuff going. But it is that whole play that Luke's frustrated. He wants to end, you know, go out there and do some heroing stuff, but they can't because of the whole law. Though, again, I think that it's one thing to say the mask and really center on that because, you know, eh, just go out without a mask. You almost yeah. think it's that easy, but it's more the vigilante stuff. It's just, but that's always against law. <laughs> that's the weird thing. <laughs> Being a vigilante should always be against law, but they don't want masks. But if you wear it, it's just all weird. You're fighting crime, but you're not a police officer. That's a vigilante. Yeah, and that's a, usually against the law. So you is. don't need a fist law. That's just with the mask. But yet, yeah, 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 yeah. But, you end up seeing, oh, my God, there's breaking news. There's a bank robbery. And I thought that this was going to be more of a, oh, my God, the city's on fire, more of a gang war deal. This just seems to be some guys, that some thugs that have upped the ante with some armor and some ammo, and they're going to rob a bank. Mm-hmm. And it felt weird. Like, okay, I get it. I go, we're going to go, but this doesn't feel gang war. This just feels like, oh, write a separate story with Luke, who's frustrated that he can't go and knock heads. but. He does say, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go take care of this. He, he, he ends up leaving the bill, which that made me laugh, actually. And uh, yeah. as they go, even then, I, I, in a weird play, too, this idea of, like, you see this cab driver when Luke jumps in and says, I need to get to Midtown fast. Run the, I thought there was going to be something weird with that. I thought nothing. there was some play. It's nothing. It was just the cab driver is going to you know run through lights. So they get there. And Luke gets out. I'm telling you, the guy that's driving the cab, pretty brave guy. He drives right into a firefight. Like, right <laughs> next to it. Like, the idea that these cops are there pinned down behind the car, and you end up seeing a cab just drive up right yeah, next to him. It's kind of goofy, right? That cop car is completely shot out. Look at the tires and the windows. Including the tire on their side. Yeah. Like, the idea that they're there. I mean, what's going on in this cab? He's just like, all right. I wonder if he gets the fare. I don't get paid enough for this. You know? Yeah, really. You would think you'd drop him off a block away. But he comes up and, again, I like what Luke does because, Luke, there's been scenes like this. He'll show up in a scene like this where everybody's crouched down. He doesn't need to. So he's just, like, standing there like, hey, guys, what's up? I'm like, oh, my God, these guys, they're there. They're pinning us down. Oh, my God. And then all of a sudden the police car blows up into the air. 
pretty cool deal. I mean, he does, and this isn't maybe the one they're behind because there's these others, but Luke just ends up punching it. He punches it, and I believe that the shrapnel that's left for the car may kill these police officers, but that's oh, just yeah. me. And yeah. I love it. They're like, as they're bleeding out, we're not bulletproof. They just end up, we don't have tough skin like you. <laughs> but he ends up, he punches them. Then he gets shot. And it looks like at first, like, laser kind of deal, but they're gunshots. And it's a weird play because, again, you have that. He can take all that. He's bulletproof. And when he ends up ripping off his shirt in anger, he's mad because those bullets kind of did so. They kind yeah. of hurt. They're they a dented little them a little bit. Better. They dented them. And it's a weird play. But, again, I think that Rodney Barnes is trying desperately to just give you something here. There's, there's a, It's a weird play. To set up the idea of this gang war and Luke's the mayor. He's got to sneak out. So that's already the deal. You can't. So he at one point sneaks out at a point that seems like they're watching him go to the bathroom. And then he goes for like days. But in the (laughs) meantime, you end up all the stuff going on. I don't mind it. These guys run then. Luckily, because as Luke is about to take them down, the one police officer he saved comes and says, "Ah, if you do anything more, I'm going to have to arrest you. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm surprised luck. they didn't. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't arrest him for damaging the police car <laughs> that he punched. I'm like, really? And again, kind of silly overall for what we've seen, but I don't mind the way it's played out here. It, like, unlike that the last issue, because Luke does end up acknowledging that this is ridiculous. He's like, what are you talking about? You can't do this. I just saved your ass. I ended up where you know you can't arrest me. And the guy says, call in the Thunderbolts, call him whatever, but you can't do this. And if you do, I'm going to arrest you. In the meantime, it does look like not just running. I believe those guys, they were fighting because the cops now are just standing up mm-hmm. like next to Luke. Those guys, they were fighting. They're just standing around the background, maybe loading up the money into the van and leaving. It's They're laughing. Play. Like, do you see them in the background? Like, yeah. why aren't they shooting the police again? I know they can't <laughs> shoot Luke, but. The other guys are just standing up. Why aren't the police shooting at them? It just everybody goes along and hey, like go do your business, and then they end it. But this really frustrates Luke, who you know wants to figure out what is going on. These are special bullets. I don't understand it. These are, and they say it's like adamantium. What would be the deal? And now we're gonna go. Which I don't know. It, a lot of this feels like a little bit of filler. You end up where Luke goes to St Albans, Queens. To talk to his man, Hanson Holmes says, you would know what these are. If this was years ago, I think you did it. What's going on to have this guy say, well, you know, a lot of big guns and weapons are coming into town now that this claw is a thing. All right. I, it, it's <laughs> one of those things that when you do play these things out, it happened with Gotham War in the D.C. side of things. Yeah. The idea of you wonder what the police are actually doing. You see them there fighting these guys. And, yeah, they have. Animanium bullets and whatnot, but you know what? What gives? Because now it's like everything's coming in New York City. Oh my God! And then just it seems out of the blue, you end up having the Sanson home say, "I recognize this. This looks like something <laughs> that Alistair Smythe would do." Oh, you mean the Spider Killer? That's him. All right, I'll go check him out. While all this is going on, Luke so keeps random. getting calls. Yeah, it's very random. Like it's detective work, but done in the way that it isn't. It's just finding the next fact that's going to be just handed to you. There's no real feel of struggling with finding out who or what is going on. So you end up, while that's going on, you end up where Luke's getting frustrated because they're calling him about mayor stuff like Mm -hmm. dog walks (laughs) and potholes and and things like that. When you think of it as the gang war, again, not really started completely, but that people aren't going to be worried about dog walks in just a little bit when the city's no. on fire. But maybe. Maybe they're going to worry about potholes like they are. But it just shows you, again, that he has that mayor duty that he's got to do. But that's kind of annoying. And that's not superhero stuff that he kind of wants to do again, especially to take down some of these jerks. So he ends up paying old Hanson Holmes. And he, okay, Alistair Smythe, that's the big deal. He's not going to go right after him because he wants to gather a team. But he also thinks, you know, in my mind, all right, well, there's a law against masks and costumes, so I better go get a new costume. <laughs> I thought he was going to get something without a, without a mask, but he, he actually gets one. He's just clearly breaking the law. Yeah, he doesn't care. I mean, like before he had a headband, 
Now he's just getting full out Shaquille O'Neal steel movie costume where he goes, it looks <laughs> badass, but still, I'm like, that just looks like Shaquille's steel outfit. He goes then to Miss Estelle. Hey, you, you still making costumes? Can you make me one? Yeah, give me a couple hours. I'll put this together. I used to like your headband. Get this play. Now, me and you were talking. This is such a, a little thing, but Luke has been talking on the phone this whole time. He's been calling mm-hmm. and he says that while he is waiting for the costume, he is going to work on some mayor stuff. B- budget stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to work on the budget on my phone. But then says to do that, he needs Wi-Fi, which it shouldn't. He has service. You already saw. He doesn't say anything like, oh, man, service is bad out here or anything, which would be silly, silly in New York. But it's only for a joke. He says, I need your Wi-Fi to do this. What's your password? And she says, it's reelect Fisk. 2026 just for and i thought it was like really and she was like no 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 it's actually luke cage rules or something but no no that's the yeah. password it's really long there's no way this lady who likes luke cage has known him his whole life is gonna have that as her password and would no have way. that just out of like i'd love it if she runs quickly to change it to that to just dig into him That'd be but funny. that's it like really and then she's, she gives him the costume later when he does get the costume. And she, he's like, how does it look? Looks pretty good. Good enough to change that password? Well, we'll see how things shake out. And then he's going to go off. And he's going to go off to search out Alistair Smythe. So he goes to his, you know, warehouse deal. He rips the doorknob off of the door. He goes in and there's a bunch of soldiers. that, And it's cool. It looks really neat. Pretty cool action going on. He's busting heads. He gets knocked through a wall, and then he, the soldiers just kind of move on. And then it's weird. He says, this is weird. They don't care about a gun. Well, they did care when you were there. You were fighting them. But now they don't because you're out of their periphery. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. But then you see Smythe again. If people didn't know him, when you see him, you're going to be like, oh, crap. Like, look at him because he is. Can't uh, forget that guy. He's a monstrosity. He is. And it even shows you, like, at one point, I thought he was dead. Well, no, he isn't. It's clone conspiracy stuff. And it's, you know, digging deep into something. It's pretty deep. It feels weird, too. It feels Mm -hmm. odd to just throw him in here. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, But he's watching this. He's saying he wants to take down the spider characters, which he does. And he's talking crap while he's looking at Luke. But he'll have to figure that out. And Again, he's just the evil guy in this he's gonna it's be a spider-man the villain scenes. and this is a spider-man event so yeah it's, it's okay and it ends up where he is manufacturing kind of these kind of soulless clone type deals so now you can also you know pretty much rip some people apart and not mm-hmm. care about anything and you do end up in hell's kitchen and cloak and dagger are there and this is where when luke got his custom on he wants to go form a team again this is why i think i like this more than that first part that first strike deal because that was really there to kind of okay here's the lay of the land here's what we're playing with and i didn't really love anything that we're playing with but when we get into this i'm like it's a comic book deal luke cage is forming an underground covert ops kind of team with cloak and dagger to start with i'm like i I like that (laughs) like that sounds cool and i think that you might have some fun with it while you end up where Luke is just like, I love the idea where Luke is going around, but I'll actually have him on, on camera, on the news, and he'll just keep denying that's him, when it's obviously <laughs> it's him. So obvious. I mean, he's so huge and going, it'll make you laugh. But Cloak and Dagger, they have come up even, I mentioned that on Candy Spider-Man earlier, mm-hmm. they've come up in that, and I always like seeing them, and they're there, you know, busting heads, and that's the way that you can play out where Cloak is going to end up consuming these guys but they don't have any souls so it ends up where they don't have fear they don't have souls something's not right and that's where luke comes in and says hey it's because you can't have fear without a soul and these men aren't what they seem to be you're not given a full explanation of what's going on but you kind of play you know what i mean and and now you also again if you're gonna play the game of hey they're bringing the animanium bullets into new york that's one thing Add some, you know, more stakes to it with these kind of soldiers of what maybe Alistair's doing. It ups the ante. It's kind of cool. And it it makes you want to, okay, we got to take this down. And it also allows Luke to just smash these guys' heads, you know, together 
to just demolish them because they're not really people with souls. But when they do go, it does look like possibly they like, are they robots? Like they never say it. I think they're robots because uh, Smythe makes spider slayers. So they're, they're usually robots. Yeah, exactly. So I think that that's what it is as well. So it's a weird play to not mention it, but they end up having that. And then are those the same guys that were robbing the bank earlier? They look similar. Yeah, it might be, actually, now that you say it, because they would have the weapons. They they just, I like, too, when these others, like, run. Like, they just take off and they say, hey, I, and Luke says, I love the city. I want to get rid of all this nonsense. This, again, this isn't the idea of, hey, Cloak and Dagger, I want you to join me because I heard that Al is making a move on the crime master. This is separate. It's its own little thing. With Smythe and I kind of like that So Mm -hmm. you end up where some might be annoyed But I I don't think it's bad because it is Comic booky and then at the end You end up having You know Dagger say hey your phone's ringing He's like yep just let me enjoy the thing Because he had this big giant like And we're going to take the city back And we're going to defend it you guys in We're in he has this big hero moment And then it is interrupted in a funny way By probably somebody calling about potholes Mm -hmm. Or dog runs again he doesn't want to ruin it So I think that I like this a little more now that we've talked about it. When I first read it, uh, I was like, oh, we need yeah. but, hey, you get Luke Cage. And I, I, I think maybe I could just look at this as I know it's a gang war time, but we get some Luke Cage action. He's making a team, so that's cool. So what would you give it? I'd give this one a full point higher than the other one, so 7.5 for me. I, I think the, art, the art's pretty good. Like I did, I've never seen this artist before, and I'm not – that familiar with yeah, the writer, but good. I think some of the dialogue is good. And Rodney Barnes is good. I, yeah, I no. really like Philadelphia a lot. It's like a really, really good book. Better than even this, but yeah. yeah. Uh, but I'm a 7.5 as well, so I'm like a point and a half up yeah, now that's that cool. we talked about it. Yeah, because you get some fun and some action. And see. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to hate on everything, but uh, I just don't know why the, this gang war, when we were going, and it would have been a funny play to kind of ask a bunch of people like, oh, well, what do you think with everything that was set up? What do you think this gang was going to be about? And most, I mean, what would you say? Oh, to be the bad guys fighting each other. But nothing was really set up to make it feel like you needed an event to deal with it. You know what I'm no, saying? Like no, you're having an event for event's sake, a crossover for crossover's sake. It was nothing that we ever thought, oh, man, reading Miles and Spider-Man and this and that. We really need a big giant crossover to really hash this out and get it done. It just feels so artificial. It feels so forced, which most do. But overall, yeah, I like this a little better. Maybe this is one of those things that will like the tie-ins more than yeah, maybe. the actual big so thing far. because we'll get characters. I'd rather read a book with Luke Cage knocking heads than a book with Hammerhead getting hit by a adamantium femur by the returning Madame Mask. That's just me. You are all weirdos. <laughs> Nude science is the revolution. Nude science is the revolution.